you are a graduate of the uh, Holistic Pet course, and um, <laughs> congratulations. Have you gotten your certificate yet? I haven't. I haven't. I noticed yesterday I was going through my emails because the email that I have for the course is where all of my everything goes to, and I don't get to it every day. Congratulations. Fun. Thank you. I do have a few questions. Tell me what you liked about the course. I liked having a new perspective. So all of mine is pretty much dedicated to raw. And that's pretty much what I've done for 20 some years. To be able to have a different perspective on how cooked foods work. I have a little bit of experience with the partially cooked type stuff. But this was a whole different, a whole different level. So it was really good to be able to see that and to see how to formulate recipes. I am familiar with the Chinese medicine, but to be able to go into that more, that much more depth into it was quite eye-opening as well. So fantastic. It sounds like it was an ideal program for you. So that's super <laughs> cool. And that you're using it already is, is really cool. And I'll ask you a uh, another question about that in a little bit, but I'll go in order. Um, is there any places that you think that the program can be improved? I know that you were an early adopter. You came to us in January and you were one of my very first students. I think you were student number two. Oh, so, wow. Uh, we, wow. uh, we both learn together <laughs> to do this. So I appreciate your grace during all of this. Um, what would you say to someone if, if they asked you if you would recommend the program? Oh, totally. Especially if some people probably wouldn't be able to absorb everything. So I'd probably have to ask them a few questions as far as you see how serious they are, or how serious they're not. But I know you guys go through that whole vetting thing as well. But I think some people are like, oh, oh, can I learn this and not realize how in-depth it is? I know at the store the last couple of weeks when I've had a couple conversations and I've been able to say, yeah, I just finished a course and blah. And then they're like, what? What? Do oh, so then they ask more questions, but then they're more relieved that I have more information for their situation. I haven't had anybody ask me about that yet, but I know that I see Facebook um, ads now. So I'm like, ooh, in my back of my mind, I'm like, okay, who do I know that would be really good at doing this kind of a thing? So to give them a step up on something. What would you like to see more of, such as would you like to see more like uh, Chinese veterinary medicine? Would you like to see mm. more about essential oils? Would you like to mm. see more about the PEMF or energetic uh, modalities? Yeah. Is there, there's tons. Boy, what in particular yeah. would interest you? And that's hard too, because I think that's all depending on where each person is at, because some of that, I would say the majority of the stuff that's in this class for somebody that has never done any of this could be super overwhelming. And I mean, and even the stuff that I was learning at times, I was like digging into the book so that I could make sure to keep it fresh in my head. And even still, I'm like, okay, I know there's something I'm forgetting. So I have to go back and reread or find where it was and that kind of thing. But I think that the deal that I like the most, and maybe only because I have dealt with Herb Smith before in the past, is her video that she did that went through and told why she put certain herbs and whatnot into certain formulas. That's one that I have, I'm like, I need to go through that again, maybe a few times just because I know the product. And I like the product, but I haven't always known exactly where to use their products. It's really good and a lot of information. Definitely not something you can absorb in one setting, oh, yeah, but for sure. it, was, I, it was very helpful. 
I need to go back through the course myself because so much has changed. Oh, I, I mean, bet. It's practically all changed. Yeah. The, the it's thing like a whole too, new course. Oh, I bet. The thing I also liked was so I like the fact that she's coming from a background of a regular vet and that she's coming from the background of the attitudes of most of the vets here in my area. And I've known they have no background in nutrition. It's not a requirement in their courses. So those are things that we try to explain to customers when they come in and we try to give them questions to ask um, so that they are um, better prepared when they go into the office. Because so many of the vets now are telling them to that they need to be having grains for their cats, that they need to be having grains for their dogs. And, but the parent is not understanding where the taurine is coming from. And so those are conversations that we're having. But the fact that, that Dr. Ruth had talked about the spay and neuter and leaving ovaries and the fact that now there's sterilizations. So my friend, Alyssa, <laughs> the puppy that she just recently adopted, which was a sibling to the ones I had last summer, she has had, it, it's been really good because she had a split heat in February when we picked her up. Then she went into heat again in August. Yeah, so she's had a lot going on in her first year of life. <laughs> But we found a vet in Tacoma that actually has been doing these kinds of surgeries for, all, it sounds like for probably 10 years. He's oh, been wow. doing it for a long time. Alyssa made the trip up there. So it's an hour-ish, hour and a half drive probably for her. And because in our area down here, for an emergency visit, if your pet is not literally dying, you could be sitting in the waiting room for up to eight to 10 hours. So she was like, I could actually realistically drive up there in an emergency and be seen well before anybody down here. So she went up to be able to ask all these questions and to see if Kaya would be a good candidate for this kind of surgery. So that is what she's doing for Kaya. Right. So it's, yeah, so it's fun to be able to have that and the information for all of that. During this course, I realized that all of my dogs either have not been spayed or were spayed at a very late age, except for Forrest and his sister. To be able, to now understand more of all these diseases because I thought, what are these people doing that is so different from me other than the fact that I've been feeding this way for 20 some years? <clears throat> Why are all of them having more of these issues than what I have had? And then I realized, oh, okay. My first dog, she ended up with that, and I never say it right, the pyrithy, whatever, the uterus filling up with pus when she was 10 and a half at that time. Yeah. We had to do an emergency surgery, but at 10 and then she popped up and she was like a puppy again. So all of my others have been probably a year and a half to six years because they've all been rescues. So I've not experienced like the incontinence and some of these other issues that they have with the early spay and neuters. So that was also another learning curve for me that I have experienced on the other side of what most other people do. So that's been cool to be able to relate those as all as well. But it, it's really hard to find those vets that will do or can do those kinds of surgeries. It's not a special, it's a specialized and a lot more involved it sounds like too. Yeah, it's a little pricier, but you have to weigh off, weigh out. Do I pay the price now 
yeah. or, or uh, to keep her healthy or pay yeah. it later at the yeah. vet when she's got some sort of, of illness that we can't yep. figure it out. So exactly. Yeah, a, and it's the same way with food. You're going to pay yeah. now for fresh food and for, with your yeah. time, with prep time, or you're going to pay later by sitting eight yeah. hours in the vet. No <laughs> kidding. For, for My people, word. For the vet it's insane. Season. And, yeah, and the vet shortage is just going to get worse. So it's not going to get any better. Yeah. So uh, congratulations that you chose something that is super, super needed. Speaking of, how are you planning to use your um, certification? You, you have a store, so I can see you helping clients that way. Yeah, my it's hard because I like the aspect of having customers right there. But I would love to be out of that and be able to do ju just the um, the phone stuff and the, the Zoom and all that. But I also know I like having the contact. And I have now we have people that send people to us because of how we have been able to help them and their animals. It just gives me another level, you know, of help that I can provide, but I don't want to give it away free. That part is the hardest, I think. I do have a gal that just sent me all of her information this week. And so I told her, I said, I will, I'll go through and I'll look at that. She did a, I don't remember what she called it. Yeah, I don't remember. It's another it's just a hair analysis. I don't it's remember the other But it's one of those ones that says this one's highly likely that it could be a problem. This is the next likely could be a problem. This is the so it, I think it's more confusing for the people that are having to go through it. Those so um those results are very complicated and very yes. detailed. So she's going to need to get whoever she bought that test from to do the interpretation. Yeah, um, and she has done that. But now she's certain things that were on there that should have been fine. She's having troubles with. And I think that it might be um, a year or a couple years old, which also could be is affecting that because it's going to be a completely different um take on things so i uh, well i told her my I'd first look at question is is she feeding fresh food because fresh food has all the nutrients that that the body needs so right. if, if she's not feeding fresh food then that's your first thing to to recommend and the dog <laughs> will be will get better with anything when they start yeah. getting the tools they need to heal. She's been cooking for her for a little more than a year, but now all of a okay, sudden good. things are happening that shouldn't. And it's probably just as easy or just as simple as changing the protein. But she also is more concerned with the fact that if something were to happen to her, this is not a sustainable way for somebody to step in and take care of her dog. So she's trying to, to be thinking forward, but also being able to pro provide the best thing. It's a dog that she adopted a few years ago as well. So she's seen super, super great changes, which is really cool that she's been able to visibly see that. But she's right now, she's been throwing up. And so I told her, I said, I'd take care. I take a look at her stuff and try to help her and figure out what we could change in there. And I think part of it too is just salmon. She was using salmon oil, had been using herring oil, and then she started throwing up. And so I just told her, I said, well, first of all, just take that out <laughs> and see where it goes. And then when I look at your stuff, then I can, you know, give you a little more information. So that'll be fun. Um, if she's willing, since she's willing to have done the HTMA test, um, I would really recommend that she do the Glacier Peaks. Yeah, I told her, I said, have because I, I asked her, I said, did you do our test? Because that's the one that we have in the store. And then she told me that she did this other one. It seems like it's called Thread or something like that. Um, yeah, so I told her, I said, okay. Um, I told her that 
the one that we have, the Glacier Peak, has a, an added element where you have the saliva and the hair, which I think gives you a little more accuracy than the other one. So she's not opposed to doing that because um, she she just wants to make sure that she's doing the right thing. Yeah, yeah that's great. And then we, as far as the food goes, <laughs> you you know about raw, and then we advocate the cooking for ill pets. Raw yeah. is fine if they don't have any issues, right. um, because it's a little harder to digest when you cook the food. It's it begins the digestion process and the, the right. uh, sick body is able to take on the nutrients right. better. But we also, Dr. Ruth has partnered with Dr. Becker's ah. Raised Right. Yep. So, I saw that last week and I'm like, yes. So uh, I've, I've so, been following Dr. Yeah. Becker for a long time. <laughs> okay, good, good. So, so sign up for an affiliate account. There's links on that email that we got. And you can promote that as a solution to cooking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that might be as far as her issue of well, who's going to take care of the, the dog after me. That might exactly. be helpful. So. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I have <laughs> one more question that I think we've already talked about. <laughs> Any success stories and the Kaya going to the, uh, mm. to be yeah, uh, for the space. sterilized is yep. a great story. Any yeah. more? Come up, come up. Hmm. I guess not anything that's finished would be the right word. I've got a lot of people that are come on, you can come up, that are, <laughs> good job, a lot of people that are in the process, we, well, and we do have, so Alyssa and I work together a lot, as far as she does dog training, she specializes in, like, aggression, so her biggest thing is exercise, so she takes them out, takes them for a bike ride, gets them to where they're tired, if you will, and then exposes them to the things that they have been reactive to. And it's been fantastic because then they don't react. They learn that it's okay for whatever their reaction has been. They learn that it's okay for that other dog to be there or that person to be there or whatever's involved. But then she also changes their diets. She comes to me for all the diet part of it and then gets them started. And right now we've, I don't even know how many people she's got, but she's working with two the Doberman Pinscher puppies right now who were super, you get siblings anyway, and they think they can fight the world because this one and his sister used to do the same thing. They get so excited that they don't realize that they're intimidating. And then the breed's intimidating anyways. So just by changing their diet, um, their, just their thinking process, you can tell, has changed. Because they're not getting the crap that they were getting in the food before. And then also mixing that with their physical activity the parents are just like singing her praises because they are eight months. I think they're eight months old right now. So they're growing leaps and bounds. And their concern to begin with was the fact that they knew they were going to grow really quickly. You can't have aggression on the leash. You need to be able to nip that in the butt to begin with. She spends, I think, probably two days a week with them, probably about two hours each time. She's been able to work with them, teaching them how to ride the bike with the dogs so that they can do this physical activity as well. But also giving them the questions to ask because they're Definitely having to go to the vet for all their checkups and all that stuff for that first year. But just 
giving them the tools that they need to know how to answer questions, how to ask those questions. But those dogs will be in our lives and probably our entire life because of the quality information that's being given to them. So it's more of a, it's more of a lifetime type of thing, being able to work with these different dogs and then being able to work with Alyssa and help. She comes to me, this dog is doing this and blah, blah, blah. What do you think we should add? What do you think we should do? So that, that's been a lot of fun to do. Very rewarding. Congratulations. It's <laughs> nice to go to bed to know that you, every night that you've helped somebody. It's wonderful. No doubt. No doubt. Okay. That's all the questions that I have for you. Do you have um, anything that you'd like to add? No. I know it seems like I did, but I think we've already talked about it. Okay. <laughs> but I'll go back and look for that email and okay. make sure that I make sure that I have that. Okay, cool. Um, this is see you later, not goodbye. If you have any questions going <laughs> forward, just let me know. Okay. Contact information and okay. Um, hopefully one of these days, um, we might uh, meet up at one of our um, if we're able to to fly and and go to some of the conferences. That would be fantastic. Yeah, no kidding, um, that'd be fun. Yeah, it absolutely would. <laughs> so, congratulations again, Thank and you. I hope to see you around. All righty. Thank you. All right. Take care. It was wonderful working with you. With you as well. Bye. Bye.